Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be checking out the WISE robot vacuum. If you're new to the channel and you like this video, press that like button and subscribe. As usual, I'm going to be taking you through everything you need to know about this robot vacuum. I'm going to be covering the unboxing, features, setup, and how well it performs. Without further ado, let's get started with the unboxing and features. Included, we have a quick start guide and a user manual, a spare HEPA filter, two edge brushes, the power adapter and the charging station, and the WISE robot vacuum. Now that we know what's in the box, let's go over some of the features. The WISE robot uses LiDAR navigation to build out the room maps and it has a total of seven different sensor groups that help the vacuum move around obstacles and detect stairs and walls. It has 2100 PA of suction power. It cleans all surfaces ranging from hardwood to tiles to soft carpets. And as long as your transitions are 20 millimeters or less, it should have no issues crossing between each surface. The robot has an average cleaning time of 110 minutes off a single charge, but should you have a larger space that requires more time, the robot will find its way back to the charging station, charge up, and resume where it left off. The vacuum measures in at 13.8 inches in diameter and 3.7 inches in height. Besides the charging contacts, it's completely made of plastic with a high gloss finish on the top. While the high gloss finish is a nice touch to give it that premium look, it does enhance the visibility of fingerprints and dust. On the top we have the LiDAR sensor along with a power button and home button. Along with a collision bumper, there's a recharge sensor to assist the vacuum with finding its charging station. Just above the sensor, there's a notch to open the lid, which reveals a cleaning tool along with the 550 milliliter dustbin and its HEPA filter. On the bottom, we have the edge brush that pops easily into place without the need of additional tools. Then you have the cliff sensors. And then in the center, you have the removable center brush. With the charging station, the charging contacts are located on the front, which in my opinion is a great idea, as this eliminates charging issues that you may encounter from when the contacts are located on the bottom of the vacuum and not having a leveled floor to place it on. To begin the setup, first find an area with some space that you could place the vacuum without obstruction. WISE recommends an area with a foot and a half on each side and four and a half feet directly in front of the vacuum so it can navigate to and from the charging base without issue. Once you have it in place and powered on, head over to your device's app store and download the WISE app. After the app is installed, adding the vacuum is straightforward. First begin by going to the plus sign on the top left hand side, then select device. At this point, you'll be guided through the setup with easy to follow instructions. Wi-Fi connection has been reset. Awaiting network connection. That includes connecting the vacuum to your 2.4 gig Wi-Fi network. Giving the robot the name of your choice. And getting it updated to the latest firmware. Starting to charge. Update succeeded. Once the setup is complete, you're ready to do a quick run to build out your room maps. Quick mapping runs through the perimeter of your rooms without the use of suction. This greatly increases the speed at which the maps are created. Now that the vacuum is all set up, let's take a look at the app. On the main landing page, you have a zoomable map of your floor layout. This map includes all your rooms and keybound zones, should you have any. Just below the map, we have three different stats to view. On the left, you have the square footage of the last completed cleanup job. In the center, we have the charging status, and on the right, we have the duration of the last cleanup job. Then over to the right, selecting the pencil icon will bring up the options to customize the current map. Here, you'll be able to create no-go zones to keep your vacuum out of specific areas on your map.
Selecting Customize Room will give you three different options to choose from. Using the Merge option, it allows you to select two rooms that are located next to each other and make them into one. Split is what you select to create new rooms within your map. And the ring name option allows you to give your rooms unique names to describe them. At the bottom, the clean button can be used to start a cleanup job for your entire layout, or you can select individual rooms to clean. Selecting the gear icon on the top right hand side will bring up additional settings. There's the device name if you want to change your robot's name. Within schedule, you can create clean schedules to do full floor or targeted room cleanup jobs on specific days, at specific times, and with specific suction power. Suction power will allow you to choose between three different levels of suction, quiet, standard, and strong. You can turn off or on notifications, check out the details of all your previous cleanup jobs, check the lifetime of your vacuum supplies, Reset map erases the map if you want to recreate it. And lastly, we have device info if you want to find your IP or your firmware version. So how does the Wise Robot Vacuum actually perform? Well, I've been using it for about a month now, and it's pretty good, but there are features that I would like to see added, and I'll get to those a bit later. Unlike some pricer robot vacuums, the Wise Robot can run in total darkness, giving you a bigger scheduling window to run your vacuum. Now, whether you choose to run the vacuum in the middle of the night might just depend on how heavy of a sleeper you are. Even though the vacuum isn't the loudest I've used, you can expect 61 decibels in quiet mode and up to 70 decibels in strong mode. Here are some samples of what to expect with each suction level. During a full floor cleanup job using standard suction, it was able to vacuum 645 square feet within an hour and 40 minutes before having to return to the charging station to recharge. After a few hours of charging, it resumed the cleanup job and completed it. When starting a job, the vacuum begins on the outside perimeter of the room before it begins the rest of the room in straight lines. If any obstacles get in its way, it's able to find its way around them without getting stuck. Crossing transitions was a breeze including crossing over to my 1-inch shag carpeting, which surprisingly never got stuck while vacuuming. Next, I ran some tests with the vacuum using standard suction power. For the first test, I spread some fur on some low-pile carpet, and for the second test, I placed some fur, broken crackers, and rice on my laminate floor to see how much it would pick up. Let's check it out. Looking at the results, it did a great job removing all the fur from the carpet.
And with the laminate, it removed almost all the debris on the first pass, which was only missed because the brushes moved the debris around. Running the job a second time, removed the remaining debris. While the overall experience was great, there's some things I hope can be either added or improved. I would love to see full waste bin alerts within the app. Right now, the only way to know when the waste bin is full is by physically going to the vacuum to check. Voice assistant support would be awesome to start cleanup jobs using your voice. Multi-level support. Right now, you can technically take it to another floor and just start it, but you'll run into the issue of the robot getting lost trying to find the charging station, or you could potentially even override your existing map. The final area that I'd like to see some improvements is with the map customization. I found that when trying to split up my main floor map, the app wouldn't recognize my interior walls as anchor points, which prevented me from being able to create rooms. Another issue I had with the map customization was the distance limit between the two anchor points that you could add. When attempting once again to create room partitions, it wouldn't allow me due to this limitation. So this is where I'm gonna end the video today. All the product links can be found in the description down below. And since you're there, hit that like button and help the channel grow by hitting that subscribe button to get all the latest videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.